If you find yourself checking into the Bates Motel, then chances are you won't be checking out, as you'll find yourself in a grisly end at the hands of Norman Bates and his mother. Directed by movie legend Alfred Hitchcock and released in 1960, Psycho was a boundaries-pushing movie, full of twists and way ahead of its time. It tells the story of Marion Crane, who is on the run after stealing a heap of money, where her journey leads her to the Bates Motel, where one fatal shower incident later, and the movie then switches to the weird and twisted world of Norman Bates, in this trend-setting phenomenon which gave birth to the slasher movie genre. So today we are going to look into 10 things that you didn't know about Psycho before Norman's mother comes for us all. So let's nervously avoid showers and check it out. Number 10, first movie to feature a toilet. Psycho pushed the boundaries of many cinematic conventions in its time, what with its use of violence, gore, and taboo subject matters, topics and issues that would seem mundane by today's standards. However, it might be quite startling to learn of just how edgy Psycho was for its time, namely the fact that Psycho is the first Hollywood movie to ever show a toilet. Not something that was considered appropriate for showing in movies back in the day. Probably because it makes people think of doing a poo. Although it would seem normal to see a toilet these days as background scenery in movies, back in 1960, the toilet was considered to be a lot more discreet and not deemed proper to be showing in movies. So it's learning things like this that really makes you appreciate the differences between then and now. Number nine, interesting choice of blood. For its time, the murder scene where Marion gets stabbed in the shower was quite shocking. Heck, it's still actually quite shocking today. It left movie audiences terrified and on the edge of their seats, and created a newfound phobia of showers. However, the techniques used to create this memorable moment in movie history is quite interesting, as the blood used for that scene was chocolate syrup, as Alfred Hitchcock knew that because the movie was in black and white, the dessert liquid could easily pass off as blood. And as for the horrific stabbing sound effects, well, they were achieved by chopping a knife into a melon. Yeah, simple fruit created those blood-curdling chopping sounds. So, yeah, back in the day before CGI, the only special effects tools that were needed was chocolate syrup and melons. Number 8. The Choice for Black and White as the 50s ended and the 60s started, movies being filmed in colour was becoming more and more frequent. And considering Alfred Hitchcock was a big time director of that era, most of his movies at that time were actually shot in colour. Even his previous movie, North by Northwest, which came out in 1959, was displayed in full glorious technicolour. However, the decision to shoot Psycho in black and white was a choice made by Alfred Hitchcock himself, as he thought that Psycho would be too gruesome to be filmed in colour. But there are other factors too, as he had to keep the budget down. You see, back in the day when Hitchcock was making Psycho, no one really had much faith in the film. People thought that it was too morbid and grisly. Paramount Pictures, who were distributing the movie, had cold feet over just how shocking the movie was. So Hitchcock financed the film himself, and had to keep the budget below $1 million. And well, back then black and white was cheaper than colour. But let's be honest, it's damn near impossible to imagine Psycho to not be presented in black and white. Not only because it's now iconic, but it just, you know, goes with the tone of the movie. Number 7, based off a book, based off a real person. On the account that the movie Psycho is so iconic and considered one of the greatest movies of all time, it's easy to overlook the fact that it was actually based off a book. The book Psycho was published in 1959 by author Robert Block. There are several differences between book and movie, the biggest being the character Norman Bates, who unlike the film where he is played by a young and handsome Anthony Perkins, in the book he's described as being a 40-year-old overweight bald guy. And in the book, he has more supernatural interests, particularly in the occult and spiritualism. And more tragically, in the book, Norman actually tries to lead a normal life and integrate more into society. 
However, more to the point though, the book is actually inspired by real life murderer and body snatcher Ed Gein. And given how Hitchcock's previous movie, North by Northwest, was more conventional, Hitchcock was intrigued by Psycho and knew that it was the sharp edge that his career needed. And thus he bought the rights to the book for $10,000. Number 6. The movie's twist was leaked. Psycho is a movie full of plot twists, from the killing of the main character in the first half of the movie, to the discovery as to just who Mother is, Psycho was a movie bound to blow people's minds in 1960. And Hitchcock was determined to keep the secrets of Psycho hidden. However, despite Hitchcock trying his best to keep the plot twists of Psycho a secret, even going as far as to not letting the movie be screened for a test audience before its release, his efforts were wasted as The Hollywood Reporter and Variety Magazine gave away the entire plot of the film several months before the movie's release. Well, gee whiz, good one, guys. You had one job to do, not to ruin Psycho for everyone. Even once the movie was released, Hitchcock wanted to protect the movie's secrets and plot twists, to the point where he brought in a rule that late attendees who turned up to showings of Psycho would be denied access. Number 5. Alfred Hitchcock the Cowboy Alfred Hitchcock always had a habit of appearing in cameos in his movies, almost like it was his personal stamp, like you knew you were watching a Hitchcock movie. Heck, he even made it into some of his movies' posters. Look at him here on the North by Northwest poster, where he's on Mount Rushmore. Imagine if they actually put his head on Mount Rushmore. That'll be interesting. However, despite appearing in the Psycho movie trailer, his actual cameo in Psycho is very subtle. In fact, some people may not have even noticed, as Hitchcock is seen quite early in the movie, standing outside the office building where Marion Crane works, wearing a cowboy hat. Yep, it's hard to tell as his back is to the camera, but that is Alfie being all cowboy happy. Damn, I wish we got to see more of Hitchcock as a cowboy. He would have been the most British and posh cowboy ever. Number 4. The Wimpy Urban Legend There is a popular belief that during Psycho's shoot, it went under the name Wimpy. Some say that this was to detract people away from the mysteries of Hitchcock's latest movie and to throw the press off, while others claim that at one stage the movie was going to actually be called Wimpy. Which, by the way, is an interesting name for a serial killer movie. Well, it could be that Wimpy was used to distract people. But there is also a more logical explanation, as the theory started because of a rare production still that came out, which had the word Wimpy printed on it. Well, this may simply be a reference to Rex Wimpy, who worked as a camera operator on Psycho. So maybe Wimpy wasn't the name of the film, but the production was just crediting a member of the crew. So what do you guys think? Was Wimpy an alternative title to Psycho, or was it just a misunderstood reference to Rex Wimpy? Number 3. R Rating Late Arrival These days when a popular movie comes out, people eagerly await to see what rating it's going to be given. And usually when a movie is given an R rating, that means it's going to be awesome, right? I mean, that's usually how it goes, yeah? Well, Psycho took a whopping 24 years to get a rating, as it finally got its R rating by the MPAA in 1984. Now, to be fair, the MPAA wasn't created until 1968, so naturally Psycho's rating was going to be late. But wow, 24 years? Well, better late than never, I guess. So I guess whoever was in charge of rating Psycho dozed off that day. Number two, Hitchcock's biggest hit. Despite the fact that no one had much faith in Psycho and thought that the movie would be too controversial, it actually was a huge hit for its time, making $50 million at the box office, which by today's standards is equal to $400 million, making it Hitchcock's most financially successful movie, and cementing him as one of the greatest movie directors of all time. Also keep in mind that it was only made on a budget of 806000 so it just goes to show that sometimes in order to make it big, you have to break the rules. And Psycho more than broke the rules. It killed them rules and then dangled the rules dead corpse in front of shocked movie audiences. Number 1. Psycho technically wasn't the first slasher movie. 
Psycho has the distinct honour of introducing the slasher genre to the world of cinema, and paving the way for movies such as Halloween and Friday the 13th. However, technically, the first slasher movie was Peeping Tom, which came out in April 1960, as opposed to Psycho, which came out in September 1960. The British horror movie is actually quite similar to Psycho, in that it revolves around a serial killer who is also a socially awkward young man, and like Psycho, it was considered controversial for its time. However, Peeping Tom never seemed to get the title of first slasher movie through the popular domain, on the account of how popular Psycho was. So, yeah, whenever people say Psycho is the first slasher movie, remember, technically it's Peeping Tom. But regardless, to be fair, Psycho did bring the slasher genre into the mainstream, so there is that. And it also showed a toilet. So that was my look into Psycho, a movie well worth its title of being one of the greatest, if not the greatest, suspense movie of all time. All fans of horror and cinema should definitely watch it if they haven't done so already. And it's surprising how a movie so old can still touch up on some pretty taboo subject matter. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm off to tend to mother. Hey guys, it's uh, Minty here, coming to you live from my... Um, red pool table <laughs> as you do so let's look at some old school figurines that i've gotten recently and we'll start off with et oh yeah this is one alien who looks like he's ready to go home although look at his chest et has got some funky things going on with his lungs et you need to stop smoking and please put that finger away Ugh. next up we've got david bowie from labyrinth and as you can see, this is the Dance Magic Edition. So yeah, he looks like he's ready to get up and start singing magic dance with all his goblins. Yep, pretty cool. Cool packaging. Got David Bowie also looking at you there. Right. Next we have Freddy Krueger. Looking really mean and scary and like he's ready to do some damage. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this is one sleep demon I don't want to be seeing in my dreams. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at him. Look at his knitted jumper there. What an asshole. Nah, pretty cool, but I like it. And here we have Daniel LaRusso from The Karate Kid. Uh, the figurine itself is a little bit meh, but what I like about it is its packaging, because it's the same as the 1980s packaging, because they actually had a figurine line up in the 80s, and I think that they've uh, used the same packaging. And look at Dan and look at Daniel LaRusso here. He's like, I'm going to win the tournament. I'm going to win the tournament. But Daniel, how can you win the tournament? You don't have Johnny to fight. Oh, yeah, well, look at this. We've got Johnny as well in his skeleton costume, ready to put Daniel in a body bag. So these two can, like, you know, fight it out. Uh, uh, uh. Well, hope you enjoyed this update. Until next time, see yous.